Hello, this is Dr. Alexander Haskell, and uh, I'll be speaking about the second most important part in treating Hashimoto's, the first part being to reduce levels of TSH, which is causing this uh, stimulation of the production of hydrogen peroxide. So the second part is, what can you do to uh, help reduce inflammation of the thyroid besides reducing TSH. Uh, there's a number of uh, really important uh, studies from uh, different parts of the world showing the effectiveness of just one trace mineral all on its own. I mean, really remarkable uh, reduction of antibodies. And that uh, is use it, the use of the trace mineral selenium. The World Health Organization has um, uh, iodine as the primary uh, deficiency in the world. Two billion uh, people in our population have iodine uh, deficiencies. Not insufficiency, but deficiencies. The second in line is selenium. And I, I think that this is a, a really important, important point here because selenium goes on to uh, help make what are called selenoproteins. And these are involved with reducing inflammation, uh, increasing the production of the body's ability to produce glutathione, an important antioxidant. Uh, remember that we do not wish to stimulate the immune system during this time, uh, but we do need antioxidants to uh, absorb and to um, uh, neutralize any free radicals or that type of waste products or waste from the destruction of thyroid cells due to inflammation. So selenium is very, very important. I suggest using the methionine form, selenomethionine, at between 200 and 400 micrograms. And uh, uh, if, you'll, if you read my book, you'll find remarkable changes in antibody levels just by including selenium alone. The other uh, uh, nutrient that will increase glutathione levels is N-acetylcysteine. Uh, this is uh, also what is known as a, uh, as a chelator, as a way of grabbing onto and uh, pulling uh, different heavy metals from outside the body. Um, so. That those are those are two nutrients to include. I'd like to explain a little bit about the uh, anatomy of the uh, thyroid gland. Um, you probably probably know about the lymphatic system. Lymphatic system is a is a uh, uh, system which uh, f draws fluids from uh, between the cells and helps dr uh, that fluid drain back into the uh, bloodstream. It's like, a, it's like a, a full circuit as things flow out of the blood uh, to circulate or percolate through tissues. That fluid then can uh, be recirculated through the lymphatic system back into the bloodstream. So just imagine all of these vessels, thousands and thousands of vessels in the front part of the of the head, uh, which are draining actually th from the mouth and from the throat uh, fluids, which are uh, coming into those tissues and those lymphatic vessels uh, pass right through and down next to the thyroid gland. One thing that many people have are mercury fillings in their mouths and these fillings when we chew or drink hot fluids or chew gum even, uh, will actually heat up and cause a bit of a vaporization and a um, loss of mercury, the dark fillings being about 50 or 60% mercury. And most of that is swallowed, but some is absorbed through the mucous membranes of the mouth and the throat and actually are pulled away by these lymph channels. What, I'm, what I've found is that those people who have had their mercury fillings removed respond and recover from Hashimoto's uh, much, much more quickly. And I'm not blaming it. I don't want to sound fanatical about this is a problem because of mercury fillings. I don't think it is. But I think that it plays a part with the way that the immune system responds or overreacts to 
the uh, inflammation in the thyroid cells. And I would say that I've seen people with antibodies, TPO antibodies, up to uh, 10,000, you know, ranging between five and 10,000. That group, there was not a single one of them that, that did not have a lot of mercury fillings. I don't, I can't say it's a direct correlation, but it's just an observation. So I would suggest that you consider uh, ways of taking care of that. And one way of taking care of it is with a product that I know works for chelating. I've, I've done tests uh, before taking the product and tests after taking the product uh, using urine, uh, testing urine to find out the uh, percentage or the amount of heavy metals, in this case mercury, again before taking the product and within a couple of days and after taking the product. I'm recommending the product called Wyora, W-A-I-O-R-A. This is, can be taken orally, it comes in drops. I can suggest taking a drop or two under the tongue. That way it will go into the capillaries under the tongue as well as start to work through the lymph and start to clear out some of the heavy metals that are in your lymph system and possibly have been absorbed into the thyroid gland. Uh, it has been told to me by other professionals in our field that where there is mercury, the white blood cells do not behave properly or the white blood cells will not go into areas where there is a higher concentration of heavy metals. I don't know the reason for this. I cannot prove this. But as far as I'm concerned, these heavy metals should not be in our system. And anyone with any kind of autoimmune condition must consider the most expedient way of getting these metals out of their system. So I think that about covers this section, which is besides reducing TSH, what can be done to um, cool down the inflammation in the thyroid gland. And then we'll cover in another presentation what types of nutritional changes are, are almost always necessary to begin to improve the health and to reduce these antibodies. Thank you.